Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Kevin Friel. I'd like to remind you right at the top that the meetings we cover are available on demand at the town's website. You can log on at www.town.barnstable.ma.us. The town council convenes for a fourth consecutive week Thursday night. Earlier today, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk about the meeting with Assistant Town Manager Tom Lynch. Before we get to the business of hand of talking about this upcoming town council meeting, uh, I just want to hear your impressions. We have our own Siobhan Magnus from Barnstable uh, participating in American Idol, one of the hit TV shows uh, in all of America. Uh, what are your thoughts about Siobhan and what does she mean to this community here? Well, you know, we're all very, very proud of her and um, we've been, of course, watching every Tuesday night and then watching the votes and kind of ties into our town council meeting because we'll be at the town council meeting and suddenly someone will email you and say, Siobhan made it into the top 24, you know, Siobhan made it, you know, into the top 12. So we've all been uh, very excited and I think it's it's going to be significant for the town because um, she's going to, I believe, have a, a long recording career. She's obviously a very talented young woman. Um, and I think the fact that she, you know, the family has promoted, obviously, music and, and you know, within their lives. And the drama club at the high school had wonderful productions with her in it. I saw a couple of them. And... Um, uh, you know, it's just it's just going to be great for the town. I think it's very exciting. Absolutely, and we certainly hope that she moves on with yeah. the competition and week in and week out. We hope, hopefully, we can talk a little bit more about I it. I hope so. Um, so now let's get back into the business at hand. The town council is meeting on Thursday. Um, they have a kind of a smaller agenda here, but it's. The, what, the fourth town council meeting right in a row that yes. they've had? Yes. So, Tom, why don't you uh, start off with um, the uh, first item agenda on the agenda, excuse me, well, and that's the local comprehensive plan. And for folks looking at, at, at the agenda, if they look at it, they'll see 2008-163. Uh, this is the adoption or approval of the local comprehensive plan. So it's been on uh, the agenda for that long. It's just that there were a lot of questions raised by the uh, the councils at different uh, phases during the uh, public hearing process. So at this point in time, uh, staff believes they have been able to address all those uh, issues. They're bringing it uh, back uh, before the council, hopefully for approval. And uh, this local comprehensive plan needs to be approved or updated every five years because it ties in with the regional policy plan um, that is at the county level. So the two go hand in hand. So if you're going to do develop development or historic planning or affordable housing or all the different categories that the uh, comprehensive plan covers, um, they go. They have to get approved by the uh, uh, the Cape Cod Commission and then also tie in with what's at the uh, regional policy plan. Now you touched on this just a little bit, and I'd like you to go in just a little bit more detail uh, about the local comprehensive. Just. Uh, if someone casually just looks at it and says, you know, what what I what exactly is this comprehensive plan? Could you just tell uh, just the, the general pieces of what the plan is and what someone might find if they went and looked at it? I think it's actually, you know, a um, an, an offshoot of when the Cape Cod Commission Act was uh, developed, and as I said, there was the regional policy plan, and then each town uh, was to develop a local comprehensive plan. And the thing that's good about it is that you look at all those areas. You know, you look at transportation. You look at uh, human services has been added. You look at planning, water, na you know, natural resources, uh, water quality, all those things, and they're wrapped in uh, to different sections of the plan. What we have done is used a, a village, uh, uh, you know, vetting si situation where the villages look and decide how they want to maintain community character, what sort of development they'd like to see. And, and we've developed vision plans, and then from that, uh, staff has developed the entire local comprehensive plan uh, for the town. So one of the things that held this plan up was incorporating back in uh, the vision plan so it's all, you know, one one big plan. And I think, I'm hopeful that um, councils will look at it, be satisfied with the changes, and, and be able to approve it. Great. Uh, the next two agenda items kind of feed right into that discussion that we were just having a local comprehensive plan and the village visioning sessions uh, that went on in town. Uh, the next two First one has to do with the Barnstable Village and uh, a zoning change that they would like to see in their district. Could you tell us about that? Well, it, it's somewhat similar to when the Centerville uh, Business District, through the Village D District of Critical Planning Concern, adopted some regulations.
population, so they're kind of similar over there. And that what they would like to do is uh, to not have formula stores or to not have certain corporate branding. So if someone came into the village and had to do it a certain way because a CBS only allowed a certain shape store, a certain you know color branding or whatever. So it's a, it's an effort to control the type of development that would go, go on in the village. And as I say, it relates really to formula stores and to corporate branding. Okay. Now the other uh, zoning change is is taking place in the village of Hyannis. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about this change? Uh, the petitioner here uh, wants to see uh, medical added back into. Uh, the high end, this the, this high end, this area. Um, right now, there's a separate medical district over by the hospital and and that area. And it was uh, that was done, I understand, several years ago to concentrate um, the medical uses and um, to let it develop around the in, in the hospital vicinity and where a lot of the medical uses already are now. Um, this petition would like to have the medical come back into uh, the downtown high end, area, and it would cover. Uh, the whole area. So we'll see the, the, there are you know, pros and cons on both sides and we'll see how the debate goes on that. Okay, now moving away from uh, zoning ordinances, let's move into uh, some some funny summer stuff with the yeah. Sandy Neck Board. Sandy Neck Beach Park, yes. Is, uh, is on the agenda. Now they have two different separate items. Um, what, let's take them one at a time. Uh, the first one has to do with uh, the general ordinances of the town and how they pertain to uh, the operation at Sandy Neck. This is one of those cleanup ordinances in that they're looking back and uh, taking the, the new branding, if you will, of Sandy Neck uh, Beach Park and there's still references to when it was known as uh, you know Sandy B the, the advisory group and things like that that were that were different so um, it, it clears up language issues then it also covers um, certain fines for going on the beach illegally right now uh, the way the fines exist is it's actually cheaper to drive out on the beach than it is and, and get fined than it is to uh, you know get a beach sticker if you will so mm -hmm. this kind of reverses that and um, catches up to to what, with the way it should be. So that should be a um, uh, you know an interesting discussion. And Nina Gol Coleman uh, will be there to uh, uh, to cover that issue. Now the other uh, issue or, uh, on the agenda that they have is to uh, to increase the amount of money that they have to buy merchandise. As a, from what I understand, correct? A very popular Sandy Neck Beach Park uh, wears sweatshirts, t-shirts, long sleeve tees very very popular so they want to buy more stock so they can sell more merchandise and you know improve their their financial picture uh, one of my favorite sweatshirts is a you know mauve colored sandy neck uh, beach park sticker so uh, rather a sweatshirt hoodie yeah. so um, uh, we, we, I'm hopeful that the council will give them more money because it's a good revenue source for them. Great. Now we're uh, just running out of time here on our uh, edi this edition of Barnstable today with our interview with you, and there's just one new business item, and it's an application uh, for a fish weir. Tell us what a fish weir is and about this application. Um, a fish weir is is a is a way of trapping certain fish and and and, and doing commercial fishing. Uh, Nantucket fish weirs has two out in the. Um, uh, you know, on the south side of the Cape, and this would renew their uh, permit to continue that uh, fishing process. Okay, great. Well, so town council meetings coming up on uh, Thursday, March 18th. The fiscal year 2011 capital budget will be submitted on Thursday night. The council will hold a workshop on the capital budget at its April 15th meeting. Now let's take a look at this week's remaining meeting schedule. Wednesday, March 17th at 7 o'clock, the Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District Committee meets in the Selectman's Conference Room. On Thursday, March 18th, the Town Council meets at 7 o'clock in the Town Hall Hearing Room. Well, that's all the time we have for now. We'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.